in this video, we'll be looking at proofs with isosceles triangles. So if you look at this picture here, think to yourself, would these two triangles, the one on the left and the one on the right, be congruent? You might want to start off by saying, well, no, because it looks like it's going to be by side-side angle. And side-side angle, of course, never works, right? Well, look closely at the big triangle. The big triangle has two congruent base angles. Therefore, it's going to be an isosceles triangle, so the legs across from them will be congruent to each other. So these two triangles would actually be congruent by either SAS, or you could have the reflexive side and say SSS. So, for isosceles triangles, definition of isosceles triangle, a triangle with two congruent sides. One of our important points for our proof is if isosceles triangle, then legs are congruent. That's the definition of isosceles triangle. The converse of that would be if the legs are congruent, then it's an isosceles triangle. So given an isosceles triangle with base BC, well, the base is the one side that's not congruent, so that means AB is congruent to AC. Therefore, I also know the angles across from those sides, angle B and angle C, are also congruent. Something important to note, let's say my base of my isosceles triangle is AB. Then the two congruent sides would be BC to AC, and this angle to this angle. The base does not have to be on the bottom of the triangle. The isosceles triangle theorem states, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides are congruent. So in other words, if legs congruent in an isosceles triangle, then the base angles are congruent. The converse of that is if the base angles of a triangle are congruent, so the two angles at the bottom are congruent, so these angles are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. And the way we'll write that in our proofs, if base angles congruent, then legs congruent. Make sure you have both of those memorized. Very important to note, when proving an isosceles triangle, if I give you the angles, you, have to, you can't just say it's isosceles based on the angles. You have to first use if base angles congruent, then legs congruent, and then if the legs are congruent, as we learned back here, then isosceles triangle. There's no if base angles congruent, then isosceles triangle. So let's try two proofs. I want you to pause and try this one out before we go through it. All right, we have angle A is congruent to angle D. AB is congruent to DC. Well, let's see. If A is congruent to D, that means this big triangle is an isosceles triangle. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say that. We know the big triangle, if base angles are congruent, then legs are congruent. So it looks like I can actually prove these two outside triangles congruent by SAS. Then I can use corresponding parts of those two triangles to say that BE is congruent to CE. Then if I know that two sides of a triangle are congruent, then it's isosceles. So there's the rough draft of our proof, and let's write it out. Angle A is congruent to angle D, given. AB is congruent to DC, given. So if angle A is congruent to angle D, I know that AE will be congruent to DE. Because if base angles congruent, then legs are congruent. And these three statements combined together tell me that triangle AEB is congruent to triangle DEC by SAS congruence. Of course, if those triangles are congruent, furthermore, I know that EB is congruent to EC because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And finally, I can finish that off by saying triangle BEC is isosceles. Sorry, I got kind of messy there. Because if legs congruent, then triangle is isosceles. All right, let's move on to another proof. And remember, 
Let me get to this other proof. If you start with base angles, before you can say a triangle is isosceles, you must say that the legs are congruent. Or if you start with an isosceles triangle with legs, you can then go to the base. So you have to start with legs first whenever you're given isosceles. So pause and try it out. All right, welcome back. Triangle ACE is isosceles with vertex C. So that means that if C is the vertex, that the side opposite, that's the base. So AE is the base. Therefore, all of AC will be congruent to all of EC. Thus, angle BAE will be congruent to angle DEA because those are opposite angles to the side. AB is congruent to ED. And we're trying to prove that BE is congruent to DA. Well, isn't AE just reflective on itself? So it looks like I have side angle side here. So let's write it out. The angle given to start off with triangle ACE is isosceles with vertex C. Given, I just copied it down. AB is congruent to ED. And finally, we have a reflexive side AE. So we'll put that up top as well. All right, so before I can talk about the angles, I have to talk about sides, because we go from isosceles to sides to angles. So we have AC is congruent to EC, because if isosceles, then legs congruent. And of course, if the legs are congruent, then I can say angle BAE is congruent to angle DEA. Because if legs congruent, then base angles are congruent. And using those three statements, I can join them together. And I can say triangle BAE is congruent to triangle DEA by SAS. And then I can finish it off by saying BE is congruent to DA because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, well, make sure you get those theorems down and you know them. Thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day.